Good morning, good evening, good day, wherever you are in the world. And thank you for joining me in this video. I am Krister Idhamar and I'm the founder of Idcon Inc. In this video, which is the first in a series of videos about beliefs, and I will come back to what I mean with that. But it's really about how to build a maintenance strategy and also a mission statement, a vision statement and many other things. But perhaps more about people. How do you get people to follow you? And it's obvious that as a reliability and maintenance manager, you have to see to that you have very good practices implemented in the maintenance organization. And these practices are built on the very basic reliability and maintenance management processes, like processes for preventive maintenance, processes for work management, processes for root cause problem elimination. Uh, see to that you have a good bill of material, that you have the right organization in place, etc., etc., and that planners actually plan, and many, many other things. Anyway, to develop those processes and to document them well, uh, that's the easy part. And also to present them to an organization is very easy. But to get followers that will actually implement these processes with enthusiasm even, that is the challenging part. And that's what I like to talk about here. Because I believe if you can tell who you are and what you believe in and why you are doing these things you want to do, you have much more of a chance to get very good results from your initiative. So we see, I like to use that an, an example from a plant in Mobile, Alabama. And that was uh, many years ago, but it's still relevant today. Uh, I was asked to help them to develop better practices uh, for the maintenance organization to make them more efficient. And we discussed that a lot and we came to the results that, of course, the result of this has to be improved reliability. And that's what I'll come back to a little later. Anyway, what we did there was to develop a mission and vision statement for this initiative, the scope and work and the charter for this initiative, Obviously, an implementation plan quite in detail, uh, put together an implementation team of uh, people from the plant and uh, roles and responsibilities for all of these people in a racy chart. What will be the expected results? What will the future look like for you guys? And how are we going to measure the results? And of course, a business case and many other things. Anyway. We started then with a number of uh, information sessions and um, that was what the manager wanted to do and I joined him in these. And really I was surprised to see that he had to tell who he was. This was a maintenance organization of around 300 people so it was a fairly big mill. And, uh, but anyway, nobody had met him. And this was the first time they really had met him. And I talk about the people on the floor, the supervisors, the planners and others. That is, in my opinion, the front line of maintenance. That's where everything has to happen. But anyway, perhaps I wasn't that surprised because it's quite common, guys. Many of the maintenance managers are sitting in their offices, in fact, and they are seldom out there showing who they are, talking to people, introducing themselves, asking how things are going and so forth and so forth. So most of these presentations included a lot of what was to be done and uh, who he was as a maintenance manager, but not much about why are we doing this and what is the future going to look like. So it was really clear that uh, after these sessions, uh, it wasn't met with much of an enthusiasm or anything like that. People said, well, we've been through this about five times before in the last 10 years and uh, those initiatives lasted for about two years or three years. Now we got a new manager and they started another initiative and another guy came in and he called it something else. A three letter acronym on the same things, etc, etc. But anyway, what I then suggested was that, hey, why don't we go out there and present what are the beliefs these initiatives are really based on and who you are as a person, as a leader in this case, not just a manager, but a leader in this case. 
you have in that case to explain who you are, what you believe in, and convince others that, yes, this is what I believe in. IDCON has 15 beliefs that we teach all our employees. And you have heard about them before in many of our videos. Everything is based on these. And I suggested, why don't we take those 15 beliefs? And then what we do is that we wordsmith them to you, or you might add something, or you might take away something. And then we base the next round of presentations on these beliefs. IDCON uses these beliefs when we are presenting to, in many cases, a new client. And we say that, hey, this is what we believe. This is who we are. And if you agree with us, we can become excellent partners for you. But if you strongly disagree with some of these beliefs, perhaps we will not be the partner you should choose. So it's, it's a similar thing when you are a leader, you want to get followers. So this was done, actually. And after those presentations, you could even see some traces of enthusiasm from some people especially planners and supervisors. I said, never have anyone told us these things before. Nobody has talked to us about these things in this way. Now we understand better what is good maintenance practices and why are we doing them and what is it based on? It has to be based on a strong philosophy. And really, really, it made a difference. People started talking about these things, what had been said and so forth and so forth, and it generated then some kind of an interest for this, even though there were still some doubts, of course. So the first belief I'd like to talk a little about today is that belief number one, cost reduction alone does not generate improved reliability, while improved reliability results in lower costs. Not only maintenance costs, operational costs, cost per ton or whatever you measure will go down. And it's obvious, the higher reliability, which means that the equipment is running when it's supposed to run, producing the quality it's supposed to do, of course, your cost will be lower. So in this case, we measure reliability. And we see reliability, by the way, as the results of good maintenance, the equipment part of reliability. And that is to measure what was the percent quality tons, if we make tons, which they did in this case. What is the percent quality we did? What was the percent time we were up running out of 8,760 hours a year? And what was the speed we were running compared to the standard speed for that product? And you multiply these three elements and you get what we call OPE, or overall production efficiency, or if you like, OME, overall manufacturing efficiency. And it is, of course, driven by the fact that to sustainably reduce cost, you need to focus on what drives cost, not on cost alone. Improved production reliability improves safety and it also drives down cost. We have to believe in that. So, of course, what are you doing then in order to improve reliability? Well, you do the same things as you do to improve maintenance efficiency, of course. You implement those practices and you see to that they are executed with precision and many other details, as we're going to come back to later. A focus on cost reduction often leads to short-term gains and long-term losses. It's not black and white, because obviously you have some obvious waste in your maintenance organizations that you can deal with, and that might result in fast results. So it doesn't exclude the total focus on cost, but the overall initiative had to be reliability driven. And um, in summary, this, this really uh, drives that this is an equipment reliability improvement initiative. And um, you have to sell that in some way. And in this case, their OPE was 86%. And a good OPE for this type of equipment and for their major process lines is between 92 and 94%. So as an example, 1% increased reliability in this case was worth $1.2 million. So it's $1.2 million per percent. The potential, potential to, to reach, for example, 92% is then 7.2 million. But I would advise don't start talking about we're going to reach 92%, 94%, and these are going to be the results. Because... You will hear why you can't do that. 
and a lot of arguments against that and so forth. But if you say 1% is worth this much, that's what we can go for. We're going to reach that in one to two years. Well, perhaps it's only half a percent. But if you just reach the first, well, the second will come and you will continuously improve. And of course, this belief has to be agreed upon with plant and operations managers. And the plant manager will be the key person here. The plant manager has to be out there, be visible, engaged, showing results, driving those results, just like you would do when you improve safety. You have to reinforce it day by day. You have to make it a way of life. It's absolutely parallel with safety in this case. And actually, improved reliability drives better safety. That is no, no doubt a fact. And the cost to do all this, the beauty of this is that it's not much of capital investment here. It's to do better what we do already have. And the cost of implementation during the first year might be higher than the results. That can happen. But in many cases, it pays off right there during the implementation. And in the second year, you will lease less and less support and training and other things. And the cost for implementation of all this will go down gradually over the next two, three years, which is what you need. And then you will see the results and they will be quite substantial. And results from implementation of these things in the plant like that is typically improved reliability or, or uh, production throughput by two to seven percent in fact. And this is reached between two and seven years depending on how good you actually work. The first one to two years, as I said, have the highest cost for implementation and then it gradually goes down. Okay, with this I'd like to end this session. And of course I'd like uh, to mention that you can read much more about this in my latest book, Knocking Bolts which you can download on Kindle or you can or Kindle I think it's called or you can go to shop idcon inc thank you very much